Hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, I think I'm saying welcome back to myself really. I haven't recorded a video for a while and I thought I would start with a new series of tutorials on um, how to program using object-oriented programming methodologies. Um, this is primarily for those um, uh, who are doing sort of A-level computer science now. Uh, GCSE, you don't have to worry about this, but if you are going into A-level, this is a particular skill that you're going to be learning. So we're going to go into it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what object-oriented programming is. You have already kind of looked at this. Um, Python is inherently uh, based around object uh, or objects. Uh, each object has different properties. Whenever you create something like a string, uh, whether it's um, like, let's say something like name equals, I'll just put my name here, Andy. Um, you can do things with that string. I can do things like print the length of that string. Um, so there'll be a property within that that says that there are four characters. I can do things like print the um, name in uppercase. So this is a function that you can apply to this object. Um, I can even check the, the type of object this is. I can print, say, for example, the type of uh, whatever name is. So if I run this, we'll just look at the output here, you'll see, let's just swing that there, you can see that we've got the length of four, we've printed the name Andy in uppercase, and um, it's of class string. And this it's this class that's kind of interesting. So we're going to take a look at that in a little bit more detail now. So let's get rid of all that. So, um, first thing you have to understand is object-oriented programming, or OOP for short, okay, is um, basically a programming paradigm um, that organizes data and behavior into what we call like reusable units. And we call these units, these reusable units, objects. Um, objects have attributes which are, vari uh, which are variables, they store data and methods. I like to think of methods as behaviors. Um, some people still call them functions, but the technical term would be methods. Um, and these are things that perform actions. And objects can also interact with other objects through uh, messages and, and things like that. One of the benefits of using uh, object-oriented programming is that it allows you to create modular and reusable code. Um, and that makes things easier to maintain and extend. And object-oriented programming also helps you to model real-world objects and entities and systems in a very natural and intuitive way. So let's see an example of, uh, of this in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it person. Now, this class is going to basically be a, um, what can we call it? A uh, blueprint, okay, for a person object. Now, whenever we create a new object, um, we're going to initialize some basic data and to do that we're going to write a method which uses a special um dunder method so double underscore these are okay dunder method called init and i'm going to use a special keyword called self and we'll get into this later on but essentially um self just refers to uh, an object's own properties so when we create a person object, we're going to pass in a few things. We're going to pass in name, we're going to pass in age, and we're going to pass in gender. Okay, so the object's own name is going to be equal to the name, which is going to be passed in. The object's own age is going to be equal to the age that is passed in. And the object's own uh, gender is going to be equal to the gender that is passed in. Okay, so this is our initialization method. Okay. Now let's write a method or a behavior that we can call from any object that is of type person. And let's say the basic thing we're going to create is um, a greeting method. Okay, so let's create that then. So def uh, greet and it's going to refer to itself. I'm not going to pass anything into it, but I am going to use values that the object stores about itself. So I'm going to just return a, a string and um, I'm going to format it a little bit. So hello, my name is, and let's call self.name. And I am self 
dot age years old. Okay, so that that'll do for that. Right now, let's create some people. So I'm going to create the first one. I'm going to call it Andy, and Andy is equal to a person. I pass in the name Andy. You can see already it's asking for a few different fields, so or variables. So I've done my name. I'm going to pass in. Oops, I've done my name. Wow. Ah. Done my name, done my age, let's give it away, 39, and I am male. Okay, so what I can then do, once I've created my object, I can then call different functions. So I can do things, well, different methods. I can say print uh, andy.name, so I can just print my name. I can also just print my gender, andy.gender, so I can access this object's attributes and so name and gender which are here and I can also call the function the method so I can write print andy dot greet okay so let's save that let's run it and see what happens and there we go so I've called andy dot name there it is I've called andy dot gender there it is and I've called andy dot greet and hello my name is Andy and I'm 39 years old if it's my birthday soon, I can also do andy.age equals or plus equals one. And now I can just do andy.age again, print that. But well, let's call the greet function again. And you'll see this time it's updated. So I can interact with the attributes on their own as well. Right, so What's good about this? I can create a, a, a blueprint for people objects. I can create uh, an object using that blueprint. And what's really good now is I can also extend this a little bit further. Let's get rid of all these things and make a different uh, person. So Bob equals person. Bob. Bob can be 23 and Bob can be male. I can then do, um, let's do Claire equals person, Claire, Claire can be 25, and Claire can be female. And now, if I just copy these and change my objects that they're referring to, now when I run this, you'll see that I've got Hello, my name is Andy and I'm 39 years old. Hello, my name is Bob and I'm 23 years old. And hello, my name is Claire and I'm 25 years old. I can use that one blueprint, this one big blueprint here, to create multiple objects, all with their own unique um, attributes, access to the same methods, but the methods are interacting with the object's own attributes. It's a really intuitive way of programming, really helpful to help you create and maintain code, but also extend your code really easily because I can then add new methods to this uh, person. Maybe I want to create a sleep method or an eat method or um, uh, do your homework method, whatever it is. I can create and extend those uh, classes by creating those, those methods. All right, so that was a quick introduction to object-oriented programming. In the next one, we're going to look at a topic called inheritance, uh, and that's just going to elevate your programming skills quite a bit.